60 seconds or less, how good is it to be an Australian champion? I don't think it's quite sunk in yet, but you know it'll it'll probably take a night or so. But um, at the minute, it's uh, it's fairly fairly pumped to be honest with you. Like it's something I think anyone dreams of in any class. And we've we've ran a few 360 Australian titles, and we've been just off the podium. So to to win one's pretty uh, pretty pretty cool. You have to push all those big big uh, title trophies to the side now. Make room for A1. Yeah, I think look at the the first national crown with the wingless. I thought it was till you win one. I think it's like anything when you win a national crown. It's it means more than anything, but to get one in a sprint car now, I think, well, it'll you know, it'll go down. That will win Australian title, so that's all that really matters to me now. <laughs> Mate, uh, not your night. No, we we're a little bit tight. We uh, missed the setup completely, and yeah, yeah. No, we just went backwards. So, oh well. So we've been a good weekend. Car straight, and yeah, we'll go into next week. A couple of good battles in there though, with uh, Brenton Farrer and Tony Moore and a few others. Uh, yeah, we had not a bad night and battled with uh, Merck out there in the heat and a few sliders. So no, it was, it was good fun, but uh, yeah, just uh, she was a bit of a handful in the feature and yeah, we just couldn't make anything happen. So, Joe Mandel, CSA 95 pilot. Mate, tell us what it's like, I know you don't want to talk about this, but tell us what it's like to just miss making the title a main. Uh, it's pretty gutting to be honest. Um, yeah, it's not a great feeling. You're sort of sitting there in the middle for the start of the A main and you're just watching the cars go around and you're sort of praying that there's some sort of incident that can get you out on the track and give you a chance and then as they go past and all complete that first lap you just know that it's all over. So unfortunately you just have to jump out and yeah, sit back and watch the race. Tony Mool, former national champion. Mate, you had to do it the hard way, you had to come out of the B. How was it? Oh, the car's great, mate. I um, got an opportunity to drive someone else's car, Sean Forrell from uh, Wagga, um, the bar-up car. It, look, we just had a bad run at the start of the night and um, got through. We got through the B, we won the B, and then had to come through the back of the A, and I think we got in the top ten thereabouts, but that was a hell of a race. It was good fun. From your point of view, it looked pretty rough, pretty brutal, actually, uh, down in three and four. How was it from inside the car? Yeah, you come so fast down that back straight and you've got to stop the car and rotate it and uh, there's a bit of a hole in the middle so the cars get really upset but um, not so bad in the car, we've got pretty big seats in the car so uh, it holds our heads up. i got one question for you though mate, I was watching you go around here and I'm thinking man Tony Moore is a master of finding other people's cars to drive, how do you do it? I'm lucky, I'm a lucky bloke, look, <laughs> look it was through It was through my old old uh, car owner in Dave Argus and, and um, he just he just said well, we were coming back from from um, Kalgoorlie there and and um, I didn't have my car together I had my motor in my young bloke's car in a late model and I was gonna have to pull it out and put it in for tonight and and uh, so and he said just come and drive this and so he just asked me then if we can go to the Victorian title with it now so that's a hell of a car it's, it's got all the right gear. Well well done mate you put it on a show for us anyway from the from the B to the back and then went forward. Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. So we probably should have got um, Paulie Solomon there at one stage, and, uh, nice and he got. Well, I did get him, and then he got me back in the end. We just couldn't get around him. But uh, good luck to them blokes. Yeah, it was good. good fun. Good fun. Folks. Yep. Former 360 Australian champion Chad Eli started up towards the front tonight, mate. But uh, it all just went downhill from turn one. What happened? Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, we got the start there, and um, uh, the guy in front, uh, Milburn, he. He must have had a stumble or something. He didn't take off that great on the start, and we kind of all piled in each other. Well, I've moved, moved to avoid that, and I've smacked the fence, and it's uh, jumped out of gear. So um, I kind of thought that it, you know, it spat all its drive line out on the track, but you know everything seemed to be okay, and I locked back in. So then I was kind of, um, you know, I was disappointed I didn't just slam it back in, and away we go. But yeah, had to go to the tail, and uh, we were we were mowing through them pretty good, and you know the car felt okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean we had those red lights, and the tyres cooled down, and I went for a harder harder choice to tyre um, that probably hurt me in the end. Um, probably wouldn't have been too bad if we were up with the front runners, but you know down the back it was uh, it was pretty hectic down there, and yeah, it um, didn't quite pan out for us. Then when the lap cars come around, and I didn't want to get in the way of their race, so yeah, so we pulled her in. You know how hard it is to win these things, mate. So you can't win them all, can you? No, that's right. You know, we uh, we had good pace all weekend. Um, you know, like we, there's no disappointments here. I mean, sometimes it just doesn't play out. You know, like like I said, we you need every you need everything to fall into place to win this race, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't. Not the front. <laughs> 
Uh, Chrissy Solomon, uh, tough night out there in the Australian title, mate. Yeah, we uh, some heat races are okay, some heat races are bad. We went out for the A. Uh, we were a bit snug on entry and it sort of made for a tough race. Tough on the arms, but uh, we sort of stuck in there and didn't lose too many spots. So I'm real happy with where we finished and we got a straight car and everything's good. I saw one moment down the bottom nearly got away from you. There was a couple of moments that nearly got away from me, but I'm just happy it didn't. Um, big thanks to Luke for putting the car together and uh, big thanks to everyone else that helps out. Phil Seymour, I saw you out the middle there when he when he took that checkered flag, mate. Uh, almost some tears in the eyes, I reckon. Yes, yeah, certainly was, mate. There was a lot more just prior to that, for sure. How good does this feel? I mean, you've been in the game only a short period of time, relatively, and you've already got yourself an Aussie one. How good is that? That is awesome, mate. I cannot describe how the feeling at the moment. It is out of control. We spoke earlier, you and I, about uh, earlier in the season, about uh, Brett being the car for the 360s as opposed to Terry Rankin. It's got to be hard on Terry, though, doesn't it? Well, no, I, I don't, I'd like not to think so. Um, Brett was our original driver. We never had a 410. Um, we only had a 360, so Brett was always our original driver. And then when we st took the step up to a 410, obviously Brett had his own 410, so then we gave Terry the opportunity to jump in the car. So, yeah, I'd like to think that Terry's still happy with the fact that he's our main driver with the 410s, and Brett just jumps in for the 360 deals. No, I was just being a little bit smart, mate, there. I'm sure he's going to be happy for you as a team owner. He's just going to be just as happy as you guys are, I reckon. I'd like to think he would be too, mate, yeah. Congratulations, buddy. Well done. Thanks very much, Brett. Australian 360 Sprint Car Championship. Make some noise for Charles Hunter. Charles, you've had a monumental weekend. Tanya and Alistair from Southwest Conveyancing. You know how much they weigh into our great sport through so many events and so many competitors, but you've had a bit of chance to digest it. How good has this weekend been? Uh, yeah. Probably uh, sinking probably tomorrow or something, but um, yeah, it's been a massive week. Um, massive weekend, um, two podiums. I uh, couldn't ask for much more than that. I think you're driving well. You drove for mine as good as I've seen you all year. Yeah, well, once you get a bit of confidence, confidence in the car and that um, helps a lot and uh, this back half of the season um, we've turned it around and uh, got the results. An Australian top three in anything is a great result. I know Brett Milburn was over the moon with the win and so he should be but a top three is still an outstanding achievement. Yeah it's massive. Um, you're, still, you're still racing against good competitors no matter what class it is and uh, to come away with an Australian third, you know, I'll take that any day. Ching ching. How about it for Jordan Charge, Australian number two. <laughs> Tanya and Alistair present you with a wonderful trophy. You're like a Simpson fly tonight. You just wouldn't go away, mate. You're really annoying there. Come on up. We start pinging a little bit there at the back. Rip a run. Would you do anything different? Would you change anything to have a, a crack at him maybe four or five laps early? You just couldn't quite get to him. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know what to do to be honest. I just uh, gave it my all out there. Um, I just I was a, felt a bit tight for the obviously the last few laps. It just seemed to get on the right rear pretty hard. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, end up in the wall a couple of times there, but um, no, as I said, I just gave it my all and just tried, you know, hell Mary at the end. Um, you know, that's, yeah, it was a winner of a minute situation there for me. <laughs> and even at that restart, pretty ballsy to run around the top the way you did. Yeah, I, mate, as I said, there was some times where I didn't think it would uh, stick, but uh, no, the car was just ripper all night tonight. Um, we struggled a little bit last night, just couldn't get the thing to, well, either it was me or the car, but uh, we just couldn't get it to work. So, um, no, I'm really happy with tonight. I've got to say, from where I saw you on Friday night, shoved into the turn one concrete, the chassis was damaged to this point, monumental effort from everyone involved. Oh yeah, I've got to thank all the boys that helped us out. Uh, Paul Solomon, he actually welded up the chassis for us and got us out there realistically. Without him, we wouldn't have been here. Uh, all my crew, my whole family, uh, all my friends, um, all my sponsors, um, you know, without them I wouldn't be able to do it. I've also got to thank um, Tanya and Alistair from uh, South West Conveyancing. Um, with these, you know, they help with the classic and everything. Without, the, like, without them as a sponsor, with the, um, the series and all that, like, we wouldn't be racing, so. Why do you like Simpson? How about it, everybody, for the Jet, Brett Milburn. Popular win. On your Bert. <laughs> Come on up here, mate, just a little bit closer to the front for me. This goes with your Australian Wingless Sprint Championship that you won down at Warrnambool, and 
couple of minutes there in to digest. Pretty cool feeling, isn't it? It is. It's awesome. I think um, anyone that ever gets a chance to win an Australian title is going to, you know, wear it with pride and just like you got to let it sink in for sure. But it's just. I think it's something everyone dreams about as a kid. It's something I dreamed about as a kid to hopefully one day become an Australian champion or, you know, to get to a pinnacle of any any motorsport. Um, and I think it's good for any young kids today. That's it's what they want to aim for, and it's you know it's what I did when I was a kid. It's just pity I'm not good anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're all getting a bit longer than the tooth. I've got to say too, for Phil and Shaz, who are fans off the hill, to become car owners. He's not a racer himself, but to become car owners and give people like you and Terry an opportunity. I can't say enough how cool that is for tonight's result. Oh look, for you know, it, it's my biggest race, my biggest win ever, I'd say, and, and Phil's as well. But like you say, for Phil and Chaz, they put a car together, and it's been an unbelievable car, and it's it's just been a combination. It's worked. Like the first night I stepped in it, we won a feature race at Avalon, and I'm, I said to Phil, I said, don't think it's that easy. It's just, it's not. It's, what? Uh, <laughs> no, and, and look, it, the, the combination worked, and even. Um, like, I want to have a shout out to Goz too, he, he was there the first night with us, unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, but um, you know, we went, we jumped in a car, we didn't know, we met up with Phil and Chaz, we, we never knew them and we, you know, we've made a friendship and we've, it's just, it's just meshed, it's worked together well and, you know, we bounce ideas off each other and something's working somewhere, but we'll just go with it. Brent, you're an, an enormous talent, I'll get that out, because mini sprints, V8 Dirt Modifieds, 360s, wingless, 410s, you adapt so well. I enjoy watching you race because you adapt and you're versatile. I love it, mate. Why is that? I think when I was younger, when I was a kid dreaming of doing it, I think that's all I wanted to do. I ate, slept, and you know, that's all I wanted to do was race. And it didn't matter what I raced, to me, whatever you're going to race was going to make you fitter, better, faster for anything else you wanted to race. And I always had the dream to race spring cars as most kids at Enter Speedway do. And, um, I was lucky enough to get a few breaks and a few sponsors and a, few, and a hand from a lot of great people and you know we just we just kept working at it and I thought we started in mini sprints and you know I didn't want to be the big fish in a little pond I wanted to be a little fish in a big pond and we went well let's let's go out of our comfort zone and get into a you know into a sprint car and then progress into a 410 and or V8 dirt modifiers as well so we were just we were lucky to get a few breaks but also it was just I think if you want something bad enough you'll work hard enough.